In today's video, we'll be continuing the series on the complete guide to survival gear with a focus in this episode on knives, axes, saws, and shovels. Let's get to it. One of the most essential tools in a survivalist arsenal is an axe. They can be used for procuring firewood, processing firewood, clearing trails, self-defense, processing wild game, general camp tasks, and may even have a use in an urban environment. Remember, there's a reason why firefighters carry axes. They make excellent breaching tools, and the way 2020 is going, shit hit the fan subsistence scavenging may become a thing. Well, except for you because you're a prepper, so you shouldn't have to use your axe as a breaching tool to scavenge the remains of the cities. But in case you do, you have it. Now there's a hundred different types of axe heads and we're not really going to talk about that in this video. But the main thing you need to know is that the weight of the axe head is going to determine how much force you're able to generate. Therefore you're going to be able to split bigger logs or take bigger chunks out of a tree when you're felling it. The thickness and the axe head and the grind are going to determine what task it's ideally suited for. The thinner the axe head, the less capable it's going to be of splitting wood. A thinner axe head that you might find on a hatchet or a forest axe or a felling axe will have similar capabilities to that of a large survival knife. Therefore, you can use it for many finer tasks around the campsite. The thicker the axe head and the heavier, of course, the better it's going to be at splitting. Another important variable is the length of the handle. The longer the length of the handle, the safer it's going to be to use, and the more force you're going to be able to generate. This is one of the advantages of an axe head that's mounted on a wooden handle. By simply changing the handle on the axe, you can generate more or less force, depending on what the situation calls for. However, making a proper axe handle is a labor-intensive process, so this isn't a change you're going to make on a regular basis. But some hardcore survivalists like to have this option just in case. Generally speaking, there are three types of axes. Hatchets, felling axes, and what are called splitting axes or splitting mauls. There are other types of axes like tomahawks which are more geared towards self-defense. But for today's video, we're talking about axes that you would use in the wilderness. Hatchets have the benefit that they are small and thus can be wielded to perform some smaller camp tasks which require finer cutting. A felling axe, as the name denotes, is great for falling trees and can also be used to split wood, although this will be more labor intensive. A splitting maul is likely never going to go into a bug out bag, but is something which is essential to have at a cabin or around the campfire. I personally prefer a Japanese hatchet like a Silky Nada because there's a much larger cutting area. Because of the longer length of the blade, it can also perform many functions that a machete can, and due to the thickness of the blade which is similar but not quite as thick as a standard hatchet, it's going to be able to withstand the rigors of a northern forest. There's three types of axe handles, metal, wood, and synthetic. Nowadays, modern synthetic handles are actually very durable, but a lot of traditionalists prefer wood because if the handle were ever to break, you could theoretically replace it with wood that you would find in nature, and thus you would still be able to use the tool. Metal axe handles, like the ones on an S-Wing, are almost indestructible, however they are very heavy and they aren't very well-balanced axes, so they're not the most ergonomic and functional. Lastly, smaller axes, tomahawks, and hatchets can also double as self-defense tools. The double-sided Haltafor's Wetterhall throwing axe that you see here would be great for zombies. But more precisely, these were used by lumberjacks back in the day who always wanted to ensure that they had a sharp edge at their disposal. One edge can be restricted for the rougher work, whereas the other edge can be for your finer tasks. Now we actually sell this Wetterhall double-sided axe at CanadianPreparedness.com and I figured, you know, I should probably try one out just to make sure it's as good as they say it is. And I was pretty surprised at how well this thing chops even very large chunks of wood. I figured it would be a decent felling axe, but I didn't think it would be a great wood splitter. But I was blown away at how good this thing actually does split wood. Now, obviously, this is fresh out of the box. It had a nice polished convex grind, which is great for axes. And the great thing about it is when one side starts to dull, you just flip it over and start using the other side. So very cool axe and very easy to throw these images here. I did have a few misses that I'm not showing here, but 50% uh, were on point. And this is just messing around with it for five minutes. So as far as throwing axes go, this thing works 
like a breeze. If you want to pick one up, check out CanadianPreparedness.com. It does come with a lifetime warranty and you can use coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER for 10% off. Survival knives come in all shapes and sizes. Some people want a knife that can do everything. For instance, Survival Lily's Apple One Survival Knife was designed to be satisfactory in terms of meeting all camp needs, whether it be chopping, batoning, whittling, slicing, and using as a fire steel igniter. But it's just physically impossible to find one knife that will do everything perfectly. When selecting a knife, there's a few key features that you'll want to consider. What type of steel the knife is made of? What type of grind does the blade have? What type of point does the knife have? And what type of handle does it have? These are just a few of the options that you'll have to weigh when choosing a knife within this category. There are three general types of steel that knives are made of. Carbon steel is tough, it's durable, it's easy to sharpen, however it's also prone to corrosion. Tool steels are a harder form of carbon steel that hold a cutting edge longer but are a little bit more difficult to sharpen. Stainless steel is essentially carbon steel with chromium added so it can be corrosion resistant. However, this added chromium and other elements often result in inferior toughness when compared to carbon steel. It's also important that you select the right type of grind. Here is a diagram showing the different types of knife grinds. Now while all of these have their strengths and weaknesses, it's important also to not get too caught up in the details. At the end of the day, a knife is a knife, and when you're in a survival situation, any knife is better than no knife. But knowing what you're getting in a knife and choosing one accordingly will get you better prepared for any situation you have to endure. Scandi or saber grinds are often found in bushcraft knives. Flat grinds are great for whittling or general use around the campsite. Convex grinds have a strong edge due to the thicker steel behind them, but I find that they're not as good for finer tasks. Personally, I like to keep it simple and go with a flat grind. It's easy to sharpen and it gets the job done. There are two main types of knife and handle configurations, a fixed blade knife and a folding knife. In a survival knife, you'd probably want a fixed blade. For an EDC knife, you would probably want a folder. Folding knives have a higher risk of breaking at the hinge, but are far more compact, concealable, portable, and lightweight whereas a full tang fixed blade knife is the most durable platform you can get. There are a variety of different shapes that the tip of a knife may take. These are all optimized to perform different functions. For general and outdoor use and survival purposes, I would probably go with a drop point knife. You may even want to tighten that up to a spear point knife. If it's the only knife that you plan on having at your disposal, it's my opinion that a pointier knife is generally more useful. Just remember, the finer the point on your knife, the more susceptible it will be to breakage. A Tanto knife combines the best of both worlds because it allows you to still have that piercing power while having a far more durable tip. Finding the ideal knife for your needs can be a very challenging situation because there are so many options on the market. Myself personally, I always carry an axe, a saw, and a knife. Some people aspire to have one tool which can essentially perform all of those functions. The downside of relying on one multi-purpose survival tool for all of your needs is that it won't really excel in any of those tasks. It will be a jack of all trades and a master of nothing. Another choice you'll have to make is what kind of sheath you want for your knife. I personally prefer Kydex over nylon and leather sheaths as they are the most weather resistant and keep your knife well protected. However, the benefit of a leather sheath is that you can use it to strop your knife, which is another way of saying sharpen your knife. Stropping is a method of polishing out any of the final imperfections after you've done the main sharpening of the knife. In terms of knife sharpeners, the dynamics of knife sharpening is a video unto itself but there's a variety of different knife sharpeners at your disposal. Now, depending on how much money you paid for your knife will likely dictate how you want to sharpen it. The faster sharpening methods like handheld sharpeners won't necessarily conform to the type of grind on the knife. They do have the advantage of being very easy and quick to use. However, the sharpness of the edge you achieve will be limited, and if improperly used, you may do long-term damage to your knife. Most professional knife sharpeners use a combination of sharpening stones, ceramic, and leather stropping methods. 
The grit of your sharpener will determine its abilities. The coarsest stones will help you reshape the actual bevel or grind of the knife. A medium grit stone will be used when the knife is very dull but not damaged. And a fine stone is used for polishing the cutting edge until it's very sharp. If you want to maximize it to a razor sharpness and a mirror-like finish, you'll have to use an even finer stone. There are many options on the market that provide all of these levels of grit, and it's certainly worth having one of these kits if you want to maximize the sharpness of your cutting tools. My personal preference is for diamond stone sets. In spite of their initial upfront cost, which can be hard on your pocketbook, they're going to last a long time and they're going to get the job done quickly. I'll post a link in the description for the sharpeners that I use. Now with saws, there's a few things to consider. The teeth per inch, pistol versus rifle grip, full tang versus folder, and curve blade versus flat. The more teeth per inch you have on any saw, the harder the object you can cut. However, if you have too high of a teeth per inch and the item that you want to cut is softer, it will perform less well. For softer woods like pine and spruce, it's recommended that you use a large teeth blade which is more geared towards soft woods. For hardwoods like white birch and balsam poplar, it's recommended that you have more teeth per inch. Most saws made by the Silky Company are available in a variety of teeth per inch. I don't know of any other company which has such a wide variety of saws available. Next you'll have to choose between a pistol and a rifle grip. In most, if not all saws, if you have a rifle grip, it's likely that it's a folding saw. People like folding saws because you can basically store a longer saw with the ability to cut larger logs in a smaller space. However, the pistol grip is much more comfortable to use and much more ergonomic. So while it might take up more space in your pack, when you actually do start to use it, it will be much easier to use. Saws also come in both full tang and non-full tang. The blades on saws that are not full tang are very easy to replace. Replacing a full tang saw often requires a full replacement of the saw itself. The difference between curved blades and flat blades is that curved blades cut faster. Now it might seem like a no-brainer that you would always want a curved blade. But the way a curved blade cuts, it doesn't create an even horizontal cut into the wood like a straight blade does. For this reason, you don't get as smooth of a cut. It's easy to understand then why a curved blade is less versatile than a flat blade when it comes to any form of bushcraft carpentry. Now I'm not going to say too much about shovels because I've done several videos on this topic before. But basically there are two types of survival shovels you can get. One or a fixed blade shovel like the Cold Steel Spetsnaz. The benefit of the Spetsnaz platform is that you can switch out the handle if you want it to be longer or shorter. In terms of folding shovels, there's a lot that have hit the market nowadays. Many of these now have a multi-tool aspect in that they have a variety of other tools in them. I've done a video on one of these before which I'll post a link to in the description. The reason why I put the shovel last on this list because as important as it is in a bug out situation, it's probably going to be the least essential of all your tools. But if you're talking about an off-grid horticultural lifestyle, then having proper gardening tools and extra ones to boot, including shovels, will be absolutely essential for your long-term survival. In the next installment of the Complete Survival Gear Guide, we're gonna be talking tech. Everything from radios to portable power systems to solar panels, compasses and navigation, and even personal protective equipment. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching once again. Check out the links in the description if you want any more information about these products. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com. Your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER. All one word in all caps.